So the first um, business owner that's going to join us is Gary. So Gary, if I can ask you very kindly to unmute yourself and also uh, put your video on. Um, welcome to the webinar. How are you this morning? Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Now, Gary, you are coming to us from Ireland, from the Boathouse. Can you set the scene for us? Can you tell us a little bit about the business that you run in Killybegs? Yeah, we've recently opened a new seafood restaurant in Killybegs. It's Ireland's premier fishing port. Um, we got off to a great start. Everything's going lovely. We're going on the 1st of December and right up until March uh, 15th, I think it was, when we got told we've got to close for a few months. How have you, um, you know, what, what's your experience of lockdown be, uh, been? Did you initially close the boathouse? And if you reopened, how did you go about that? Well, we had a week where we kind of just closed up, took, took stock of what was happening, and then I got talking with Eugene, and he was able to come up with a plan for us to get an online order and portal really, really quickly. Uh, so really, we didn't have much of a gap in our trade, and we were able to, to change the whole model of how we operated, more or less within the space of a week. Um, it was a very, very quick transition for us to an online business. And so prior to COVID lockdown happening, did you have a takeaway service that you were running in the boathouse? No, from the boathouse, no. It, it was fully seated at our restaurant. Um, so no, absolutely no way. We were, we were busy enough the way it was. We didn't need to look to do anything. So it was a complete uh, sidestep for us to get into that market there. So why didn't, why did you, I'm interested to know why you didn't just close the restaurant, sit back, enjoy furlough for a while. Why did you put yourself through trying to create a new avenue to trade with your customers? I think standing still financially was the biggest goal, not to go into a slump. I think too many businesses will show weaknesses after three months of being closed. Um, cost to reopen them would be difficult of finding the energy and the motivation. I found myself more clued into what the market was doing and how people were reacting. But we, how we traded in March, how we're trading right now, two entirely different situations. It's evolved continuously throughout COVID-19. Um, and I think staying open, being ahead of the game, like we, we're, we're at a huge advantage over the competition in our area because we've never stopped. We didn't lose our customers and we, we've also gained a lot of theirs. And it is interesting because from uh, the speakers that we've got this morning, we'll see evidence of um, the different attitudes towards having um, running your business during crisis and those that stop, those that get started and those that, you know, never stopped. Um, I'd love you to share. We've got lots of business owners joining us this morning that are interested in understanding how to. Um, to use things like a takeaway option and trade differently without incurring massive costs. Is it an expensive way to run a business, a takeaway service? It's a lot more efficient. Um, once we got on board with Rhino and we got our heads around it, our customers registered to use it, we were more or less able to predict our business every evening by about 3 o'clock, 3.30, whether we needed to do a lot more mise en place or if we were good, same with ordering. Did we need to increase the order for Saturday to allow us to carry through Sunday as well? Because people are organised, and if they didn't get the time slot they wanted last week, on Tuesday or Wednesday, they're booking Friday and Saturday for the week after to get exactly what's their day. So it gives you huge efficiencies. You manage with only one additional staff member uh, up to about, you know, times where you could be doing 160, 180 takeaways. So and were you surprised about how your customers very um, naturally migrated to the use of an online ordering service? Um, because normally a takeaway, you ring up and, um, and I guess you didn't have to experience the chaotic phone lines and human error in writing down the orders and taking payments over the phone. Did you find your customers adapted naturally to? We loved it. So many compliments on the system. It's where we created it. You know, um, what we did was implement it. But it, it really made their lives easier. They didn't have to, I mean, our phone did ring a lot until people got used to using the app. Right. We couldn't answer it. When we get the orders through the online system, it's right there on the screen. I, I don't need to waste that time. You know, so you're, you're able to be more productive the whole time you're working. But the customers mm -hmm. loved it. And the, the payment was huge. They, they didn't want to stand at our window. They didn't actually want to be in public in the very peak of the COVID crisis. 
all they wanted was to get their bag and get out of there. And, and having the prepay, everything was done, just made them more comfortable. It's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, consumer behavior has changed hugely and I, I'd love to come back in a moment to mm. see what you think will happen to consumer behavior in the long term but interesting hearing you speak about how you were able to react to a new priority of theirs which is to get access to the food they wanted from your restaurant but to do it in a way that did not require them to hang around and interact with anybody um, in the actual experience of collecting it. And you had predetermined collection slots, didn't you, that you could then protect people's safety? Yeah, and it, it's different, especially as a chef who's into a la carte food. We're not used to doing a 60 minute, maybe breast thicken versus a four minute or a five minute fish and dip simultaneously. Well, we can do it for one table, no problem. We can do it for two, but suddenly, that time is repeating every five minutes. You're getting these complex orders coming together from a timing perspective and your box and the late. And so there's a lot. So we went one order every 10 minutes for a week or so. Then we increased two orders every, every uh, we went to one order every five minutes then. And then as we became better and more efficient, we increased it to two orders for five minutes. Right. You know, without a limit on the size of the order, it could be two people, it could be 10. And when you when you say about you um, have changed the the pickup slots and the, the amount that you're doing, normally with um, any sort of e-commerce site, those those changes need to go back through the um, the actual website designer, and that, that they can be hard to be agile enough to respond in the moment. How did you manage the need to do that? There, there was no issue. Very self-explanatory. I mean. You didn't need any training. I, I, I mean, Eugene, they got the brief run through of it, but you know, you're normally doing six other things. You just can do it. It's so simple. Navigate logical. Because I see from the um, I see from the the website there are tutorials that you can follow, and then I guess on a daily basis that allows you to um, respond to your desire to trade and you can change the number of collection slots or you can change your menu. And I know there's many people joining us today who are worried about the impact, the financial and the profitable impact of streamlining their menu. Did you, you know, what, what would your, your advice be if someone's worried about streamlining a menu to cope in this? Oh, uh, yeah. You really got to look at getting the, the menu that works within the same time zone. Like if your average cook time is five, and it's build your menu on food like that. You don't want to limit it down to every customer can only order for one person or two people. You, you get family groups going. You need to be able to, when the pressure comes on, you might get a run of those big tables together. You can still get the food out effectively and get you out of the weeds fairly quick. Because nice. you, know, you don't want to hamper your ability to trade. So you've got to structure your menu in a completely different mindset. Stay true to your own food concept. Make sure that you can do it in a, in a shorter time period what we would be used to doing in a, in a busy restaurant. And so if you have managed then by the sounds of things to continue to deliver what your customers are expecting and they want access to your food but they want it on their terms and you've been able to create an environment where it's safe for them to come and collect it at a time that they chose paying online so your customer service angle is sorted what has the impact on the the running of the restaurant the the experience for your team um running um an electronic system like that they, they really found it simple there was no mistakes our upsells went up actually um so they little add-ons and sides that people quite often ask for after the payment's been done at the at the point of contact you know uh, <clears throat> you just got your brand with you but, yeah. But they're actually pre-ordering. We, we would have seen a, a big increase in side orders, a big increase in dips. They're just silly little things, but it amounts to hundreds of euros a week. Yeah. And that's just by it. It's simple. It's large build. We'll click through it. The customer made the decision to add it on. It didn't make you expensive. They added that in themselves. You know. And if people are ordering in advance, I'm guessing for the first time ever, you're getting an absolute clarity on what you need to produce to have ready to deliver and, and collect on certain days. So that must have an impact on wastage and food prep and efficiency and calmness in the kitchen. What was it like? It was, it was very quiet, very, very easy to deal with. I mean, we didn't have food waste. We were, 
you know, after you get your first couple of weeks of doing it, people are ordering that month in advance. Uh, you really bring it down to the wire. It's it's efficient. Design. And the last thing that I'd be really interested for you to share with us, I'm curious about the impact of your reputation because I know that the hospitality industry is relatively unforgiving and your reputation is at risk every day. Yeah. Have you come under... Um, press interest or have you come under criticism for continuing to try? What's it been like for you? No, it's been very positive. I think we managed it well at the beginning. You know, got a professional guy in and made a video of how we were working with Rhino app right. uh, or Rhino Online, how our process and showed them do the, the order online, we showed them how they were going to walk into our courtyard, the collection point, and the, the separation of people, you know, it, it really made them feel comfortable. But, we, we would have garnered a fair bit of media attention here in Ireland for being one of the first businesses out the gates. I mean, I think there's been maybe four or five national newspapers have covered both the restaurant and the sea, the, the boat house and the seafood jack in various different levels about their ability to trade and trade successfully and safely. Um, within the industry itself, you know, phone or email is often with, with other businesses that are beginning to reopen, want to know how we did it, what we were doing and how they can replicate it because they're educating <laughs> themselves from our mistakes at the beginning maybe or whatever you want to call it. Brilliant. But, uh, no, it's been very positive. I, I think it's really put us in a good position. Bookings are flying and I'm very, very confident the season ahead. Brilliant. And so the the extra dimension of trade that the app has brought into your world, you don't see that ending at no. the end of lockdown. It will just no, be an no. additional way to trade. People like to trade online, they like to buy, they're comfortable with it. And so you think people like and want will want going forward that that social media element and the instant access to your menu and the yeah. collection, not something you're going to stop? No, you've still got families. I mean, what we're seeing now is we've got people that maybe somebody had a recent heart attack either before COVID, after, or maybe they're suffering from cancer and they're, they feel really safe to come together as a family unit, but they don't feel comfortable coming to a restaurant exactly at the moment so like we're going to see an awful increase in that uh, proper nice a la carte food again going out to houses where they can have their whole house experience but in a real safe environment and that's where the app is going to allow us to do that the public have a bit to do here as well they've got to manipulate the way they think about dining out and dining in well, I think, you know, we'll see consumers make the choice based on quality and also safety and convenience. So, Gary, thank you so much for joining me this morning to share your experience. And um, I look forward to the continued press coverage that the Boathouse has. So thank you so much for joining me.